Hi, this is Dr. Shweta Aratya and welcome to the Limitless Brain channel and lab. We will be bringing concepts of modern neuroscience in and combining with ancient literature wisdom for the bridging science and spirituality. Also, we will be talking about neuroparenting. We will be talking about raising smart kids. Today's topic is all going to be about balance. But balance of what? We have been talking about balance of the brain, how the right and the left side of the brain is extremely important. But what about breathing? What about the two? I often say, why do we have two nostrils? You could just have a single pipe and you could just breathe all the air in. Why would you need two distinct nostrils? The answer actually lies in the yogic ancient wisdom. The answer actually lies in the yogic practices. There are so many nadis or channels which are going through us. Yes, I do have a physical body. I do have a physical brain. I have a left and a right side. I do have two systems parasympathetic, which is my baseline tone, and a sympathetic system, which is like fight, flight, fear. I want to be protected. I want to rush all the things that, you know, if I want to attend to something which is threatening, I'm prepared. My muscles are prepared. So our life sort of goes between the balance of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic uh, systems. My brain between the right and the left also keeps shifting. The important thing is, what can I do to balance it? Now, people who are suffering from anxiety, people who are listening to me and who is worrying too much, there's a lot of stress which is happening in their life. They just cannot stop their mind to think much or overthinking, overrunning. There is a lot of fear, there's a lot of self-doubt that the, the things are not happening right in their lives. My simple suggestion to them in this neuro tool section is to start doing Nadi Shodhana or Anulom Vilom, a very simple practice also called the alternate nasal breathing. Now firstly, before even I go into the nasal breathing, let's talk a little bit about breathing and pranayama. Please understand pranayama means prana, vital force, and ayama means control. It's a beautiful Sanskrit translation of pranayama. It's not just breath work. It is not just breathing. Everything is scientific. Every little nuance of it actually helps you understand what is physiologically going inside your system and in your brain. I would like to take a poll here and ask you how many of you have been breathing in your life. Possibly everybody would say, oh yes, I breathe, I breathe. Now I'm going to take a poll and say, how many of you have been breathing right? When I say what is breathing right, what is that? So first of all, you have a chest. I want you to put one hand over your chest and one hand over your abdomen. When you are breathing, please see the movement of your hand. Your hand should come out like that, especially for the abdomen because there's a big muscle called diaphragm. When I'm taking the air in, my chest is expanding. Diaphragm is pulling the chest down and it is also expanding the stomach, expanding the... Why I say stomach is because there's no way that I can show you the diaphragm. So all you can understand if I'm breathing right is only by the movement of this particular area and portion. So if you're breathing right, it should expand as you inhale and it should contract as you exhale. If you watch very carefully, people who are not breathing right, reverse will be happening. People who are not consciously deep breathing, no movement will be happening. And ideally, chest was not supposed to give us the depth of breathing. It was this big muscle called diaphragm which was important. And as I was talking to you earlier, why would I just have a single pipe and all the air flushing in and that would have been easy. I have been given the two nostrils. So what is really the purpose of it? So alternate nasal breathing is very, very important, simple technique very very easy to learn anybody can do it there are no special contraindication that a person can do or not do everybody of us can do it and in fact what i would recommend is simple eight to ten rounds every single day as you wake up should be done we do use a mudra called vishnu mudra this is the mudra 
I'm not an expert in mudra science, but I do understand that mudras are representative of elements. It is taking care of all the five elements, the earth, water, fire, space, and that word, what we have. It is very, very important to balance them as well. So each of the mudras helps us in doing that. Now, when I am breathing through one nostril, holding it a little while and exhaling through the other nostril, please remember certain formulas. The formula is one is to two. When I take in the breath, it should be one. When I release the breath, it should be two times. So if I take in the breath from the right nostrils, which is four, let's say I'm holding at four, then I should be exhaling at eight. Very, very, very simple to understand. I take the breath from one nostril, I close the other one, and I exhale, but I exhale two times longer. Now, when I'm doing this alternate nasal breathing, two very important things are happening in the brain. There is an exchange between the left and the right brain what is happening. In fact, I want you to observe right now, as you are listening to me, which nostril is active. If you, if you put your hand a little bit right across at the nose and see the air flowing in, you will see either the right nostril is active or your left nostril is active. Every couple of hours, there is a change of this breathing which is happening. When your left brain is active, when you're rationally thinking, when I'm working, my right nostril will be active. It will be throwing more air. And just the reverse when I'm relaxing. For yogis, for people who practice this, they generally have both the nostrils air flowing in. Very, very easy and interesting to understand if you are in the right state of breathing so that you're in the right state of thinking. I often say breath is the bridge to your mind. If I tell you, stop your mind, don't think so much, don't overthink, you will say, how is that possible? Automatically, when you will reduce your breathing, when you will calm down your breathing, your mind will calm down. The tortoise lives 100 years because it just breathes four to five breaths a minute. If you look at the dog, they pant. They are often breathing very fast. Their lifespan is shorter. Your breath span decides your brain span and hence your health span. So please remember this breathing is extremely important. In fact, if you uh, look at Swara Yoga, if you look at some of the ancient beautiful scriptures and textbooks, they talk about methods to alternately change this breathing. There is something which is kept under the armpit, right? There is uh, that is kept so that that pressure will change change the breathing uh, pattern in that particular nostril. That was not just for the sake of doing it. That was to actively shift the brain's processes. So my right and left nostril is actually changing my left side and the right side of the brain's function. Left side, more linear, more structured, more organized, more data centric, while my right side is more abstract thinking, more vision, more space connection. So I want a balance of both of that happening. So right early in the morning, this is like a cleansing pranayam. Do it alternate breathing at least eight to 10 rounds. Quality over quantity. Please do not do half-heartedly. Please do not do for the sake of doing it. There is no need to repeatedly do more. Doing it right, doing with quality, focusing, using the right mudras, making sure that your entire mind is on it. When you take in the breath, think that you are inhaling power. Think that you are inhaling all the beautiful things that you deserve in life. And when you are exhaling, think that you are exhaling your problems. All your issues are being exhaled. So doing it with complete focus, doing it with complete attention, making sure first that your breathing is right, making sure that you consciously involve the diaphragm in breathing, making sure that you sit straight, making sure that you may be cross-legged, you can sit in Padmasan, you can sit in Sukhasan. These are just various poses which you can sit making sure that the mudra is helping you in the energy bodies. I'm not going to go a lot more into the energy bodies, but there's so much science 
of chakras of the energy bodies of these channels particularly as we are doing the alternate breathing the alternate nasal breathing is very good for blood pressure people suffering from anxiety people who cannot sleep well people who are thinking too much it is also very good for people who are just going into any exam or into a preparation somewhere you want to just balance your parasympathetic and sympathetic it is a great tool very easy no particular restrictions are necessary anybody can do it any age you can do it just do it properly do it well because alternate nasal breathing is one simple technique to actually balance out the functions of the brain and keeping the control of which nostril is breathing would allow you to function well in your daily life so in the neuro tool section i bring in very simple very easy to use everyday practice which can take your brain to the next level your life to the next level because i want you to lead a happy and a healthy life signing off dr shweta aratya from the limitless brain lab